only problem is that we, something wrong has gone on because we've got a figure eight knot, so I didn't spot what happened there. But that wasn't, that wasn't meant to happen. Anyway, it was a, a reef knot. The question is, decide whether it's prime or not prime. Thank you very much. I think, actually, it's always useful if you can have analogies in maths and have a concept which applies to one thing and think how it applies somewhere else and you get a deeper understanding of that concept. So the notion of prime we can look at with knots as well. If we can separate something into its constituent parts, with numbers we break it down into its basic primes. With knots we can do the same thing. And in fact with polyhedra, yet another area where we can think about the notion of prime. Well, the icosahedron is not prime. And the reason that I say this is that we can find a plane within the shape that we can slice through that doesn't cut through the actual faces. So we start with the, the basic icosahedron here. And if you look along these edges, they all lie in the same plane and you can slice the top off. So you'd end up with this shape here. Now that shape if you want to try and imagine what its base is, that cannot be sliced again without actually cutting through a face. So that particular shape we would consider to be prime. The shape that we have left here, after we've taken that off, is this shape. And actually slice another pyramid off the bottom. And what we're left with then is this antiprism. You might want to have a think whether you think the antiprism is prime or not. <laughs> have a look at that shape there. Try to visualize how you would arrive at that shape. Rather than the antiprism, how could you get that? Starting with our original solid, we then got that after slicing off one of those pyramids. And in fact, starting here, we can still slice again. We've just sliced the antiprism by taking off that. But there are other options. If you start here, you can actually slice a different way. And that's where you'd end up with that shape. But that shape isn't prime because you can slice again. You can slice like that. And then we end up eventually with that. Again, you might want to have a think about that shape and decide whether there's any more slicing to be done there. Okay, so that, that's another aspect of prime. This is an image that uh, I have not been responsible for here. You can Google these things and you can see other shapes that can be sliced, other shapes which are not prime. So the obvious question is to think about the platonic solids. Are there any of those which are prime? I wonder if there are any of the regulars that are prime. And then, of course, the Archimedean, which here we have an example of different ways of slicing that one. Now, I'm going to go on to a bit of the mathematics of knots now. When we talk about knots in a mathematical way, we don't have loose ends. That's why I needed to have people holding ends, because it constrains the topology of what was there. So we join the ends together, and then we start to study the shape. And so the overhand knot, the mathematical term for that, we call a trefoil knot, and that's how it's normally represented. The thing that we want to think about is invariant properties. Prime would be one. We're looking for things which define similarities and differences in our knots, something which doesn't change no matter what we do to the topology of the thing. We don't allow cutting, and we don't allow people holding the ends to do illegal things. So one of the things we can talk about is the crossing number. The crossing number is how many points the rope crosses over itself, but when it's reached a minimum. And in this particular shape, that's how the figure eight knot would perhaps usually be represented. But in fact, that's not a figure eight knot because it's got a superfluous crossing. If you can reduce that from four to three. So that will actually untwist and you end up back with that trefoil knot. 
So the crossing number three for the trefoil knot, if you saw an actual figure eight knot, which that is down there, the crossing number of the figure eight knot is four. So that's something which doesn't change. Even if you've got lots of extra twists in it, you bring it back down to its minimum number of crossing. We talk about the unknot because that's something which will undo to a normal loop. Its crossing number would be zero. Just have a look at those pictures. Do you think any of those are unknots? I do find children are quite good at this, by the way. I'm not sure if it's an age thing. <laughs> Does it help when you can see the answer? Hopefully I've got those numbers right. Again, it's a nice thing to try and work the brain a bit, I think, that sort of thing. Next thing I just wanted to say something about, and that's mirror images. When we talk about rigid objects, rigid 3D objects, and we make a solid like that blue one, and then the red one is actually the mirror image of that, we cannot pick that up and turn it round and make it look like the other one. They are distinct objects. I wonder with knots, which are not rigid, whether in fact the same applies, whether we can actually mess around with the rope a little bit and make one mirror image turn into the other. The figure eight knot with its mirror image there, are they distinct or not? This is the question. Well, of course, with 3D objects, there are some whose mirror images are the same, but there are some whose mirror images are actually different. And is it the same with knots, I wonder? So that's another question uh, for you to think about. Now, the next little bit of topology, uh, we're talking about things now which will be not rigid, that you can move, that you can actually fiddle around with and change the shape of. And sometimes that makes it easier to transform from one shape to another. So there's a nice little thing on YouTube here which I'd like to show you.